this video is part of a series on uh, serial port hacking and uh, we're just looking at a bunch of different devices and connecting to the serial ports on them and seeing if we can or can't do anything with them. I'll also check out the, uh, so yeah, be sure to check out the links in the description of this video for the full playlist. You might want to check out the previous videos since uh, I'm going to be going over some stuff uh, very quickly that I've gone over more detail in previous videos. And also there will be notes in the uh, description of this video, uh, links to notes that go over everything as well as some extra um, information. This device is, uh, the model number is uh, 9100A. It's a video uh, camera server. Basically you can hook up up to four uh, cameras on the input here and basically it runs Linux and it has network plug here and just runs as a web server allowing you to remotely view whatever cameras you plug into it using these um, RCA component connections. Well, the today, well, for a couple of days, I realized mine wasn't working. Finally got around to looking at it, and I uh, thought maybe it had gotten messed up, so I hooked to the serial port on the inside, which I'm about to show you, and it would not, uh, I was having issues uh, trying to connect to the network and stuff. I ended up wiping out the, the uh, file system, and then luckily recovering it later. So that's what we're going to show you today. In the end, it turns out I didn't have to do that. Turns out the problem was my power supply that was supposed to be putting out five volts of electricity was only putting out like a half a volt. Luckily, I have uh, like two feet away this uh, router here, this old router that I have a part that I'll probably look at in another video, uh, actually had a plug that was the five volts and one amp that this needs and the plug fit perfectly. I was originally, once I realized that, going to power it off the um, serial port connections, which I'll show you. But let's go ahead and take this thing apart. To take this thing apart is very simple. The top and bottom just unclips, so just pull on them, they pop off, and then you'll see three screws inside. So let's go ahead and uh, start taking it apart. So, as you saw, top and bottom unclipped, there were three screws, and then you just have to wiggle the board out. And then the board itself, as you can see, is actually two boards, uh, which can come apart. Try not to bend the pins. There you go. So they connect on a row of pins there, and then four more pins over there. So let's have a look at the top of this. So I took the boards apart just to show you that they come apart, uh, but we're going to leave them together. Uh, you have four pins, already, you know, the, the, the header pins are already on there, it makes it very easy. And we have ground, receive, transmit, and voltage. Uh, it's five volts, so if you have a, a five volt um, uh, serial port connection, you can actually power it off of this rather than using the, uh, the power cord that comes with it or you can use power. So e either way, uh, that's kind of how I realized it's like I had it working and then I didn't have it working. And it was because I was powering it off this device here, uh, off this, this pin here rather than the pin there. But let's go ahead and connect again. We have ground, receive, transmit, and the voltage, uh, five volts. And remember on your serial port connection, if you have a uh, USB to serial port connection, um, you are gonna do uh, transmit, to gr uh, transmit to receive and receive to transmit. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. So here we are, I've wired it up with uh, ground, receive, transmit, and the five volts. Uh, and again, you can get USB to serial port connections like this one here. Uh, this one was probably less than $3. And this one has both a 3.3 volt pin and a five volt pin. Uh, you need five volts to power this device. If you use a 3.3, you're, you're not gonna get good results. In which case you can use your standard, you know, the, the power plug that it came with if yours is working. Uh, so we got that hooked up. Let's go ahead and go to the computer and I'm gonna use screen to log into this device. Okay, here we go. So again, I'm using Screen as my uh, my software to connect through the serial port. There are a lot of other programs out there. Uh, Minicom is another one that people commonly use. Uh, but again, I'm using Screen just because that's what I'm used to using. And again, uh, mine is a uh, USB to serial port, so it should be on a Linux machine under your dev folder, TTY USB zero if it's your only uh, serial device. If you have more than one, it might be one or two, but if you have more than one serial port uh, device, you probably know what you're doing. And the baud weight for this is um, uh, 115200. There's other parameters you can put in there, but the defaults seem to work. 
So I am going to go ahead and hit enter on that and then connect the power. I just connected it till I had this running. And here we go, there we go. Now I could hit, hit escape at this point to get in debug mode, but I'm gonna let it boot. And right away here it starts booting up the Linux kernel. And then we're gonna start getting this waiting for auto uh, negotiation complete. And we're actually at a shell now. If I was to uh, hit enter and type in ls and hit enter again, you can see it's showing me files. But it's gonna keep on showing this message that's trying to initially uh, initialize uh, the ethernet. And it's because I don't have the ethernet plug plugged in. So let me go ahead and see if it will reach. Okay. I have plugged in my ethernet plug and so now it's connecting to the network and the device is up and running. And again, my device is running fine now. Uh, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna type in reboot. Well, you know what, while we're here, let's just talk about this device for a minute. So originally when I bought this device, I was hoping to get a shell on it, uh, but I couldn't I didn't, couldn't figure out how to through the web interface and uh, it was a couple of years ago. I didn't really know very much, very, very little that I know about you know connecting to serial ports on devices like this. That's why I'm doing videos like this for you guys. Um, so, I mean, if you can get a serial port like this, usually you can get a root shell, which we do. But I was hoping to make, make it tweak it and make it do some more fun things. And I might be able to, if I look through it, maybe modify the web interface a little bit if it isn't hard-coded into, um, well, it looks like the web server's in this folder. So that's, that's it. I haven't even looked that far into it. But this device only has um, two megabytes of flash on it and eight megabytes of RAM. So very, very limited on if you can make any changes of anything. But in case like this, we can fix it. So I just wanted to, to let you know that, that this is a very, this is, I, I have had um, wall outlets that run Linux that have more, more storage on it than this device. There's no busy box. Most of the core tools are not there. Very little you can do. Anyway, continue with this uh, tutorial. I'm going to reboot. Will that work? No, uh, power off or just unplug the power and plug it back in. <laughs> and if I hit escape, okay, I hit escape fast enough. So, so I, I just, I, again, a lot of the tools are on there and I haven't played around with it much, but I went to the bin folders and there was basically nothing there. Um, there isn't even a find command. I mean, basically CD, LS, and CAT are all you have. Um, but at this point, I unplug the power, plug it back in, start it up, I hit escape on my keyboard to get into debug mode, which is the bootloader. And at this point, I can go ahead and hit uh, H, and hit H, and hit enter. And it will give us uh, some options here on what we can do. And so what I'm gonna do, just for sake of this tutorial, is I am going to wipe out uh, my my root file system and then flash it back over. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then and also in the uh, descriptions in the link, yeah, the, in the links in the description of this video, I'll have links to the files that you can get for flashing this device in case yours gets bricked. Although you could always make your own. But let me go ahead and uh, type ls here, and it shows that we have three partitions. We have the boot partition, which the boot partition is always the scary. That's what we're in right now. With a serial port connection, if your boot partition is good, usually uh, you can, as long as you have images that you've backed up or were able to get somewhere from the firmware, you can recover a system. If the boot partition, the bootloader gets messed up, it's a bit harder and you, it's beyond my knowledge at this point. Uh, there's something called JTAG, uh, which is kind of for when you get to that point and I haven't even touched that sort of thing yet. Uh, but that's our first partition. Then you have your Linux kernel. On ARM devices, the Linux kernel is usually its own partition. And then we have our root file system, which again is very, very small in this case. Again, we only have two megabytes of flash for all of this. Your Linux kernel, root file system, and your bootloader. So it gives us, you know, it tells us where it is in, uh, in memory on the flash. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to save this command right here, delete. And you can see it's partition six, even though there's only three partitions, but I'm gonna say Dell six, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And we are deleting the uh, root file system. And hopefully I don't mess this up, because this is like, uh, when I bought it a couple of years ago, a 70 or $80 device. Um, but I already did this earlier today. So uh, now, let me just type boot. 
and you'll see it will start to load. It's you know it brings us back to the bootloader. It's going to start loading the Linux kernel, and then it's going to give us a kernel panic because right here it says unable to mount root file system. Okay, so what we need to do is go back into the bootloader. Uh, so I'm probably gonna have to unplug the power and plug it back in. and hit escape. Okay. Now, again, if I list out our partitions here, it gives us information here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the FT command. So if I type in H, you can see that there's an FT command, which is program the flash by FTP. So we're going to run this command. I'm gonna copy and paste this. It's in the notes and the links in the description, but the FT, then partition six, it's gonna be the root file system. And then we're gonna give it the, the uh, coordinates, if you wanna call them that, uh, that, that it wants, we want it to flash it at, okay? So dash A, so we had that information from earlier. It's in the notes, in the links in the description. When I go ahead and hit enter, so before we delete it, if you were to just want to flash a new image, this is going to delete it. It's gonna do what we already did, but I just did the delete command to show you that I've messed up the file system. Go ahead and now it's gonna say, it's waiting for, it's gonna to try to connect to my network. And hopefully it does. Let me check my ethernet cable here. Well, I hope it connects. Otherwise, I just messed this device up. <laughs> okay, uh, I switched out uh, uh, the uh, Cat5 I was using for a different cable. Obviously, there was something wrong with that. I did get a little worried there, if you're wondering. Yes, I did. Uh, but yeah, I ran this command, and if your cable's working and your router's working, uh, everything, it should connect. And uh, then it says, waiting for download. So at this point, uh, the device has actually started up an FTP server. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into a folder where I have downloaded the firmware. So here I have an image. And again, there'll be a link in the description of this video to these files. Uh, and hopefully they'll be up when you're watching this if you need them. Uh, so at this point, all I have to do is I'm going to use uh, TFTP, so use whatever FTP server or client you use, so TFTP, and as you can see up here, the IP address, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and now I'm connected. Now I just have to go into a folder called, uh, whoops, tab completion does not work, uh, binary, let's try it again, or binary, not a folder, but a command of binary, and then we're going to put uh, a, the file right here, the ROM FS, the ROM file system image. We'll go ahead and hit enter and it should only take a second or so because it's extremely small. And now it's flashing that and I can actually exit out of the uh, FTP, actually it's not exit, it's the quit command. I'm just gonna let it finish flashing just to make sure that doesn't mess anything up. Okay, quit and then I'll close that. So. We have flashed that image over, and I am going to now type in boot, and it will reboot device, and now we should boot, and everything should load up fine. There we go. No kernel capatic. It should try connecting to the network. Hopefully it does. If not, I'll switch out cables again. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I, that error always seems to come up. And... There we go. So I don't even think there's, okay, IF config is there and you can see you are connected to the network. So we flashed the root file system over uh, with the image that we had and everything worked great besides the little, uh, little mishap we had using a bad Cat5 cable. So again, it's a simple little device. It was kind of expensive, but at the time, it was the only thing like this that I could find. I had bought some cameras that came with a DVR, but the DVR was not very good. But I got such a good price on the units, the cameras are actually cheaper with that DVR, so I ended up not sending that back. I ended up buying this, and like I said, um, 
I said seventy or eighty dollars. I'm too cheap to spend that much. I, don't, I might have spent that much on it. I tried uh, looking it up on uh, eBay today. I couldn't find this device on eBay with a quick search. So I don't know if they're really made anymore. Uh, but there's a lot of notes out there on them on how to grab images, which I have all the links. In the description, we'll have notes of that. So once you have it up and running, the web interface on how to use, uh, you know, uh, HTML uh, requests. So you can use curl or wget to switch from camera because you can only look at one camera at a time. You can flip between them and um, and how to grab those images. So actually, in the previous uh, video, I talked about this device because I did uh, my smart doorbell, my Wi-Fi doorbell, and when I press it. And actually uh, sends a signal to a computer that does uh, three wget requests or three or four wget requests to pull images from the front camera here. So it switches it to the front door camera, takes a couple images and uploads them to a server. So no matter where I am in the world, I can see who rang my doorbell. Um, but also I can remotely log in and view any of these cameras. So uh, again, only eight gigs of RAM, two gigs, or sorry, eight gigs. 8 megabytes of RAM, 2 megabytes of flash, so there's really no space left on this for anything else. Um, you do have a power switch here, you have a little reset switch here, the power plug is there, your ethernet plug here. Uh, this is an audio jack, uh, so I think I think you can plug audio, I think that's what that is, I've never used that jack. Does it say on here? It doesn't say. Um, and then again, you got your your Serial port connectors right there. The connectors are right on there. I didn't have to start anything on. Made it very simple. And you know the hardest part about taking this part and hooking up the serial part port to it is uh, wiggling it in and out of the case here because you have to get everything at just the right angle to to get it in there. Oop, that's upside down. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll get that back in in a minute. Um, Hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description to my website. There you can search through all my videos from both my channels. This is my hardware channel. I also have a software channel. And um, also, if you do enjoy uh, my videos and find them useful at all, think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com forward slash mailx1000. There's a uh, link in the description to that as well. Or you can go to my website, click on support. There's a link to my Patreon there. Or uh, if you want, you can you know, send me some cash through PayPal. I really do appreciate any support, even just a little tiny bit. If you get enough people giving a little tiny bit, it helps out a lot. I do hope you, hope you found this useful. You know, um, doing this sort of stuff with zero ports is relatively new to me in the last year or two, and um, I'm really getting into it now. And I just really want to share that information because there's a lot of notes out there, but not a lot of videos. And uh, But once you do it a couple times, it's not as scary as you think. And so many devices you can you can get yourself a root shell and for me any device that I can get the Linux kernel running on and a root shell as device I can use for something. So I do thank you for watching again. I hope that you have a great day.